wonderful to have on GPTV the president of the REIV, Leah Callanan, who's got so much time on her hands. Just, we just found her wandering around the streets here <laughs> and thought, gee, you look like you're lonely with nothing to do today. So come and join us on GPTV. Nothing to do, Gary. Uh, so thank you for being here and joining <laughs> us, you. Leah. Um, and boy, what a job you've taken on in 2020. Did you know that you were taking on this? No, I have. Um, apparently, I crossed way too many black cats. In Is the last that right? Months you must have. It just seems to keep giving 2020. Yeah. It's absolutely full on. And let's just talk a little bit about what it means to be the president of the ROV. Because firstly, there's an election process. Yeah. Is that a vicious, dirty, tough, horrible, <laughs> gritty election? Or is it very civil and, uh, uh, no, and very it's pretty, it's pretty civil. <laughs> okay, um, fair enough. No, it goes through the executive process. So there is a... Uh, see a vice president, a senior vice president, and potentially going to be president, and usually there's follows in the sequence and voted by the board. Okay. Um, so clearly the board knew something I didn't. Yeah, they obviously they had they a crystal, crystal ball and said, yeah, honestly, yeah, let's put her in this job. They all walked away having a bit <laughs> yeah, of a chuckle. Right. Uh, tell me, you've been with the ROV for a few years, though, in, yeah. a, in, in other areas. What have you done there over the years in terms of your other roles? Yeah, so... Well, Gary, you'd remember her from the disciplinary committee, wouldn't you? Oh, well, I do remember, <laughs> Phil, because I had to write a letter on your behalf uh, to give you a character <laughs> oh, reference. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not true, by the way. Well, by the way, what's your purpose of that? I mean, you have that, is that like your security? Are, yeah, is there anything? Are you watching movies or Netflix or? Friendly. Is that yeah. what it is? Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. Leah. That's he'll right. he's he'll jump it every um, now and then. Minecraft yeah. or something on there. Yeah, he's what, I think it's Netflix. He's yeah. become very addicted. <laughs> We're worried about him at the moment. Uh, so you've been involved before. What have you done before the ROV? Oh, um, so six years on the board, right. um, uh, ROV trainer, right. spent a lot of time on the uh, property management chapter. Back when the legislation for residential tenancy in 97, I worked on that. So okay. I've been around wow. a while. Absol yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and your period of presidency is from when to when? It's from October to October. Okay, fair enough. Just in time to have all of the fun. Uh, That's so, right. So we'll just reflect on that for a second. So you've started, you've come in in October, you've come into the time when the market's turned from being not such a great market into a great market. Agents are flying. Things are wonderful. 2020 looks like yeah. the year from heaven. Amazing. Then we high have the bush. Rates. Absolutely. High clearance rates, great volume, uh, no vacancies, everything's flying. And then, of course, we start off 2020, the bushfires, a terrible tragedy. I think it's been all overshadowed with the COVID crisis. Uh, and then, of course, you've had that. You've had the new tenancy laws that have come in, yep. uh, which we've yep. got some news on that. And now COVID. Yeah, COVID-19. Yeah. So, uh, and two constitution yeah. cha challenges as well through, uh, through the membership. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's yeah. been, you know, yeah, it's you been know, nothing else to do. And, of course, on. you're you're a mother with three kids and you're also running your own business. So no wonder you've got plenty of time on your yeah. hands at the moment. I, yeah. I really am tired. <laughs> can, yeah. can, can understand a little bit um, and uh, so at the end of October you get to re-elect as well you get to go in again do presidents get a second term is it like oh. America where you get two terms or can you get is it indefinite or oh, my, my lovely senior vice president Adam Docking does often say two term Leah Oh, is that um, right? Yeah. I'm not sure Lee is happy with that concept. <laughs> Fair enough. So. <laughs> can, understand, can understand that as well. Yeah. Uh, now, most people know about the REIV, of course. It's been around for how... Do we know how long it's even been around for in terms of oh, its... Oh, I think it's, it's... Oh, you know, put me on the spot on that one. Uh, I think yeah. it's 80-odd 80, 80 years. Yeah, yeah. thereabouts. Uh, and, and what's the main core function of the REIV? What do the REIV do? Uh, so it's a membership organisation, supporting yep. members, uh, training members, lobbying government. Yep. Uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And, and probably now after the Easter break and we saw the changes that came in, proposed changes for um, inspections taking place and then now not, um, now the ROV is certainly at the forefront of, of every conversation. Yeah, it seems what what percentage of real estate agents are members of the Real Estate Institute of Victoria? Uh, we're sitting at about 80%. Okay, yeah. so it's pretty yeah. well yeah. subscribed. That's right. Yeah. And if you're not a member, you've actually had this big fear of missing out over the last four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I think um, we had 60 new membership applications come through this month alone. Yeah, well, if there's ever a time you wanted to be a member, it's now. Uh, yeah. I mean, understanding yeah. what's going yeah. on. And uh, I've seen broadcasts coming out from you personally through, and of course, the Institute at you know 11 o'clock at night and weekends and you know crazy, crazy times. So you must be going burning the candle at both ends yeah, now. It must be it's, crazy. It's, I just said to um, a, mem a board member before that um, you know it's five weeks. It's five weeks, seven days a week at the moment. Mm, it must it's be 100. Yeah. percent um, How many people work there at the ROV? A uh, team of just under 30. Okay. Yeah. You're the president. Gil King is the CEO. Yeah, amazing ha CEO. He is fantastic, and uh, and his background is an interesting one as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So yeah. his career started in the police force, which most people aren't really aware of. Yeah. 
um, and then spent uh, many years at HIA yep. um, and has had a lot of work uh, association with government, knows many of the, um, the ministers and, and the, the people who you know, make rules and, and legislation. So um, it's quite amazing when you go to a function with him, you kind of lose him because he just knows everyone. Yeah, he's that yeah. person. He's very well connected. Yeah. I think he's a fantastic CEO, yeah. does a great job, and yeah. I know he's bringing us together uh, really, really well, which Absolutely. is fantastic. Um, now, I don't know if it's been forgotten or we've been forgiven, but we did do GPTV many years ago at the ROV. I feel like maybe you knew about that, which is why you've come out here rather than inviting <laughs> us in. <laughs> Uh, because I don't know if we have any footage, but last time they set us up in a room, they said, look, Enzo will be with you shortly. Now, you've gone through all, all of the room, Phil. You've been camp followed around the camera. Broken a whole lot of things. Broken yeah. things. You tried to take that big, what was it? Is it a big, big bell? Or was it it's a, enormous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah it's it a big is. gavel. <laughs> so, it, it's a metre um, and a half long. So yeah. I think Phil got caught halfway yeah. down the stairs yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you've come in here now. Um, let's talk a bit about the ROV. There's also Real Estate Institutes for every state as well. Um, and I just want to talk a bit about how you deal with government also, because I know that in the past there's been real challenges with the yeah. way government have, has dealt with the industry in terms of the relationship between RIV and government. I'm, I, I don't think there's any contra anything controversial or secretive about that. I know that's been a real issue, but it seems like now there is a very good uh, or certainly much better relationship between the RIV and government. Are you yeah. finding that's, yeah, that's changed? Yeah, it, It's important that the the government in all the different areas are um, able to come to the REOV and, and have these conversations. Yep. You know, we received, you know, on the weekend we received the draft regulations, we received notification generally beforehand, everything remains confidential before it is publicly announced. Um, you know, there's mobile numbers of ministers, you know, I know that we provide direct information through to the Treasurer's Office twice a week, particularly yep. around the auction clearance rates, because obviously he needs to know what yep. money he's got coming in before he can spend it. For sure. Um, but yeah, directly with the Premier's Office, it's it's really a, a very deep relationship, which has been great. Yeah, which is just fantastic. So can I ask, they're properly consulting with the Real Estate Institute, because all, over the years there's been a lot of feedback amongst uh, members about how consultive are they with the REIV? Do you feel that the level of consultation at the moment has been sufficient? Uh, look, I think it's a challenged area with COVID-19. They certainly will say, okay, this is what we are planning. What information can you provide to us? Tell us some practical challenges that are going to come with it. So they take that on board. Whether or not they take everything that we make suggestions on you know, and implement it, it's probably unlikely. But you feel your access yeah, to government is sufficient? Yeah, absolutely. It's a key stakeholder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because certainly in the past, it's been government will just come out with things. There's been no discussion, consultation, and, and really very often no understanding about the impact yeah. of things. And that's been yeah. probably one of the big downfalls, I think, of government mm. historically. So it's good that they're actually in touch with people who are in touch and know what's going on and yeah. are on the ground. New South Wales, I think, is a bit controversial. There's a bit of a revolt yeah, there. They, uh, they seem to be taking different paths at yeah. different times. Yeah, so I think, I don't know, if it's, is it the Institute and the government that are sort of parting, almost parting ways? And it, it became like a... A, almost a toxic relationship because uh, you know they didn't want to be governed anymore by the consumer affairs body and uh, I know it got really out of control yeah. there um, and thankfully it hasn't yeah. been that way and at the end of the day it's much better that everyone just gets on and, and, and communicates yeah. and, uh, and you're going to have yeah. some wins and you're going to yeah. have some losses and, and what you have to learn to do and, and I, I've had to learn to do that with you know I don't necessarily agree with all of the changes coming through from the residential tenancy act but I can say you know we had a win here you know, we had half a win here, yep. you know, this isn't great, but we work with it now. And I think we have to do that as an industry body. 100%. And uh, let's talk about Good Friday Eve. Uh, oh, the Eve of Good yes. Friday, uh, agents get that notice yep. saying no more opens, uh, no more, not opens, we know opens are a little bit in the distant now, yep. distant past, uh, but we know that, you, you know, the, the government's come out and said you cannot take people through homes um, that are occupied, occupied by yep. tenant or owner. Yep. So if I'm an owner of a house and I've employed Philip Kingston to sell my home, and I'm Which so would happy be that amazingly good choice. Would be a fantastic <laughs> choice. And I'm so happy with that. And you've said you've got all these buyers that want to come through, Philip. And then all of a sudden you can't bring any of them through yeah. unless I move out of the house or something. I mean that was a very aggressive stance. Um, it was turned around. 
Can we talk about that? Or yeah. Do we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. came through at about 5.35 on, yeah. on the Thursday yeah. night. Have a good Friday, Leah. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and industry, yeah. And I terminate all of my Easter eggs <laughs> over the Easter break because I was on the phone so much. Um, <laughs> but on the Friday morning, we were already on the phone. You know, There were communications to the Premier's office, the Treasurer's, the Minister of Consumer Affairs yeah. saying, we think you've misunderstood the practical elements and how yeah. we can actually work with it. And, it, and yeah. we were able to turn it around. I mean, it doesn't feel like there's examples of agents abusing the safety uh, no. requirements. It's, you know, I mean, yeah. that would be jumped on pretty quickly. Yeah. And I think you'd know about it pretty quickly. Yeah, but absolutely. I mean, every agent wants to protect themselves, their employees and the public of, and both residents and tenants and everybody coming through. Yeah. So, you know, you can imagine that it would be OK. So that's been changed very quickly. Yeah. And, right. uh, and that was and I'm sure that there was it wasn't by coincidence either. I'm sure that the ROV played a part in that. Yeah. And there were and, strong conversations yeah, during that, thankfully. those few days. And yeah. thanks to the government for seeing the sense in that yeah. as well. Uh, we've also had another situation where the residential tenancy laws have now been pushed out, the new laws. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened there? So we know that the Residential Tenancy Act was due to come into effect 1 July. Yep. Uh, and, you know, you know, as a property manager myself, yeah. you know, that was one of the reasons, you know, it was such an attractive 2020 <laughs> proposal to be president. You thought that's all you yes, had to deal right, with, yeah. You just deal got this with. one thing. That's right. Yeah, then there's the fires, the COVID yeah, and yeah. everything else. Yeah. Um, we, we'd been lobbying, lobbying government uh, for a few weeks to say, look, we're concerned about the the practical element. We knew the regulations weren't coming in until the middle of May, and that was going to give six weeks for us to train the state of Victoria. It just wasn't enough. Yep. Um, so we're really pleased that government you know, you know, took our suggestion on board and, and being able to push it back. So it yep. will come into effect either on or before 1 January 2021. There's enough going on, isn't there, oh, without it? Uh, I think so. There's just so much going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And no question also, it gives everybody, the entire industry, the chance to understand how to roll out those regulations, make sure that there's nothing that we don't know about or understand. Even And there's even some small things that seem to me that haven't been, what is a pet, for example, you know, stuff like that, that has to be worked out yeah. um, so we actually know where we're going. Aspect. Um, now you also you also do, and Philip alluded to this cheekily before and thankfully it was a joke. Uh, you do deal with disputes. Um, yes, it yes. doesn't it doesn't seem. Is it, are there many disputes between? Uh, is no. agent to agent disputes yeah, not agent the part? Yeah, no, yeah, very very few. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me, I've probably seen one come across my desk. Yeah. Um, Jim Lorandis at the RAV is amazing. He picks up the phone and he does yeah. the old fashioned fashion aspect of. You know, cranking out, out. Yeah, yeah, cranking out a solution. Yeah, that's right. Rather and than these letters backwards and forwards, and yeah. it's not worth it. We just need to, you know, sort it out and move on. And I think the rules are pretty clear now. Most agents know what they've got to do. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it yeah. comes Tell out. Me, the issue that's gaining traction in the media at the moment is stamp duty, mm. uh, and it seems to come and go on a regular cycle of news media. Uh, what's your view? Stamp duty got any chance this time of mm. of getting some traction? Well, we are expecting today some announcement from the Premier that there is a desire to remove stamp duty, but then have a um, an overall blanket land tax for all property owners. So, yeah, we have to really look at how that's going to work. Yep. What are the thresholds? What are the measures? And if you're an investor and you already pay land tax, do you pay that land tax on top of this proposed new land tax? Um, are the, qual are the um, calculations going to be the same? It, it's something that we need detail rather than just... On balance though, does the Real Estate Institute have a position as to favouring a tax, a broad based tax? Or is the stamp duty just a necessary evil? I think there are some advantages having the broad based tax, but there needs to be some concessions around it. Particularly if you think about somebody who's maybe in their 60s who are probably not going to sell and buy real estate. So. Should they be penalised? Um, and again, those measures and, and formulas need to be applied. And the land tax is really, I mean, land tax has never been higher. No, that's uh, right. That's and also it's different for it. commercial yep. as well. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, our, our calculations and our formulas are better than New South Wales. Our so land tax is... You don't want to push too hard. Is that right? On land tax? Or mm, is yeah, that right? Tax, yeah. It's even higher there. Yeah. Um, also, I think in New South Wales, there might be a state tax. I don't know if it's still in or was going to be in or has been in. Uh, where if you if you're not occupying a home, they is a premium on that as well, is it? Yeah, the know? vacancy tax. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. Is that's so not a Victorian show? Yeah, no, it's in Victoria, in Victoria as well. Too. Okay. Very quiet. We don't right. hear or see too much of it. Yeah. Uh, I think the Victorian market pays about 19 different taxes around the property. Yeah. Is our stamp duty still the highest in Australia? Uh, it's up there. It's yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it always was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And now the medium house price has just jumped to 893,000. Yeah. 
Let's yeah. talk about that for a second too. The medium high. That's uh, a good news story for me. That's a good news yeah. story. I don't. I don't want to put too much water yeah. on, the, on on that. But uh, that's also from what period? Uh, that's the March quarter, so yeah. January. Which you have to remember, January is very quiet. It is, yeah. Uh, I think agents came back a little bit earlier this year, probably the last week of January. Yeah. Uh, we saw a couple of weekends where there were eighty percent clearance rates. Yeah, it was, um, it was flying. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So it's up three point seven percent since the December quarter. Okay, so that's from January, February, March. Yes. That's so right. now we're, it's going to be interesting what we see now. Yeah. Uh, and, and just on that, I mean, the volume is down significantly yeah. down. Um, I mean, certainly agents in the industry are hurting. We're not. A we're not an industry that gets a lot of sympathy out there yeah. um, and there's people that are a lot worse off with mm -hmm. different industries right now particularly but with our volume being decimated uh, there are agents that are in trouble surely right now yeah, that's um, right. and I don't know you know how how I mean when COVID's over do we think there's going to be a big upsurge and upswing in activity uh, we know that traditionally through the winter months there's lower transactions yep. and less transactions so that's expected and you know it's from the industry, it's not bad timing. If there yep. was ever going to be good timing, yep. this is the better time for, for us as an industry. But I am really confident that I think we're going to have a really, really strong spring. Yeah, it uh, feels like it, yeah. doesn't it? It feels yeah. like there's, everything's being sort of pent up and almost stocked on the shelves yeah, and it'll all just right. come out then. Uh, vacancies and rents, what are we finding there? I mean, you're, you're, you're not only the president of the yeah. industry, Institute, but you've got your own business, of course, yeah. and it's property management, and it's been around for a long time, and it's got a great name, reputation, yeah. although none of our landlords listening yeah, here no, don't, no, don't no, want no. you running <laughs> off to Leah. Um, no. <laughs> they, yeah. um, tell us a little bit about how you're seeing the rents now. They feel like they've dropped and come away a bit. The vacancies mm. are taking a bit longer. What are you finding out there in terms of your business? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So vacancy rates were sitting at about 2.3%, uh, but anything less than 3% is critical. So yep. that's what people really need to remember. Uh, I think what we'll just see, the rents will adjust a little bit. I don't think we're going to see too much because you tend not to, um, you know, there still has to be that stock coming through. We were already, you know, we're getting 120, 130,000 people coming into the state every year from a migration point of view. Wow. We've got to house them somewhere. Yep. So uh, I, I'm, I, I'm confident that we'll see rents probably remain reasonably stable. Yep. I think what we'll see over the next few months is how this new legislation is going to play and how we work from a, from a practitioner's point of view and, and in the sense that you know, we're qualifying and I think you guys would be doing the same thing, you're qualifying people to view properties. The same yep. would be applying from a rental, a rental point, point of view. Of view. Yep. Uh, and uh, and I, I think that's that, I think that's very true. I know our guys are asking a lot more questions, not just meeting people at will. Um, although, just talking about the actual rent being paid, uh, we talked a bit off camera just beforehand, uh, massive majority, like 97%, 95% of people paying rent, paying full rent still. Yeah. So I think uh, that says that even though there, there is some unemployment that's increased, which is a very sad of course, but with the job keeper, job seeker, yeah. and with people understanding that rent is right up there in terms of their greatest commitment, it just seems like most people are still getting the rent residentially most landlords are getting the rent. Would that be a fair yeah, to say? Yeah, I think so. I think we're seeing different pockets that are going to be challenged more than others. Yep. Um, but absolutely, you know, my dialogue all the time at the moment is that once that job keeper and job seeker payments start to come through, yep. and people are seeing those funds in their bank account. They'll be yep. able to be, you know, confident that the system's working, but also confident that they can make their payments for their rent. Yep. I spoke to a, a developer yesterday, and uh, I wonder if you're a developer now, are you going to be likely, do you think, to actually get a little bit more grace in terms of being able to develop? I mean, certainly for the economy, and I, I know if we talk about inappropriate development, we know that that's never good in any time, in any economy, but we talk about appropriate development, or certainly some uh, increased level of density, do you think there's going to be more of an appetite from, from government bodies to allow developers to put cranes in the sky and start doing some development to make certainly inner suburban living a bit more affordable and a, a little bit more available for people? Yeah, I, I think the affordable aspect is always a challenge. And to see, you know, I think units are sitting at $660,000 as a medium house price and, you know, houses are at ninety three. It, it, we still have to have affordable housing so that they have to look at the locations and the, and the types of the properties. And obviously cladding is the other aspect that needs to be considered with everything else that's going on out there. Yeah, and what is going on with that? You know what, cladding is one of those things yeah. that's kind of very quiet at the moment yeah. because there are so many other things going on, but yeah. it's not going to go away. Um, you know, there'll be vendors that just won't be able to sell their properties for, for the time being until that cladding yeah. is resolved. So the cladding's an issue that's a sort of a new issue. Yeah. And the other issue, of course, is, is meth in apartments yeah. and in, in houses. I mean, that's something that was also 
You know, I mean, we've both been around a while. All, all three of us have been around a while. A long while, Phil, really. But, I mean, we're seeing things that we've never seen before. You know, yeah. we've got now uh, situations where, and we've had one in our rent roll, where it was found that the tenant beforehand used it for meth, either used meth, or, and now there's this whole process involved. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, you know, pretty severe for a landlord. Now you've got a place vacant and you've got to spend a lot of money getting it fixed yeah. up. Um, how do we track and monitor that now? What are the yeah. what are the rules and regs and requirements around that? I mean, That's we're right. all just working that out. Yeah. Uh, have you got any thoughts or comments on that? Look, there is the new legislation says that there is a requirement to disclose it, um, yeah. but that's only if you know it. And, yeah. and you know, we have to remember, property managers, you know, they're not the police. They're, no. they're not investigators. They're doing you know an amazing job on on the skills that they learn on the job every single day. Yep. So, you know, it's about making sure that if they are coming across anything, that they report it to the police and, 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 and the insurance company, because it is, it's a whole other issue there. There are some also regs around material facts. It's yes. also come out now. <laughs> it's another thing to throw in the mix That's now. Right. You, you're aware so of that? We're going to, if you know that you've got an apartment that was a meth lab yep. and the person that was running the meth lab had coronavirus yeah. and the building that the apartment has cladding, has cladding. Yes. Yeah. is that going to be an easily yeah. problem? <laughs> you yeah. might have some challenges there. Yeah. It'll be yeah. easy, easy to let all sell fit. <laughs> it can sell that, yeah. no problems yeah. at all. Bargain, bargain, bargain. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. That one might, that's room. not the apartment that you want. It's probably not the best <laughs> listing and it's going to be fun getting a valuation yeah. on that one, isn't yeah. it? Or an appraisal. Yeah. Wow. Well, you've uh, you've been generous to come yeah. on the show, so thank you. Uh, so much going on in the real estate world. It's a fascinating time. Usually we're talking about all of our auctions and sales, but there's none of those. But just before you do go, I want to talk a bit about Perth, because or New South Wales, uh, Western Australia, I should say. Western Australia have come out and said, I know. open for inspections. Yes. Um, have they actually made that declaration you can have them, or they said we're moving towards having them? Because it was a bit what I saw. Towards yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, the, you know, we've been watching the the numbers in in WA and, and Damien Collins is the president over there. And, yep. and and they too have a lot going on. They've got the RTA happening in their space as well. Is, so. is there a sort of a secret president's group that you're part of? They uh, go and look, there huddle is some and. Conversations <laughs> that, that right? happen, you know, off record. Yep. Fair uh, enough. So that everyone's aware yeah. of, of the challenges that each other's facing. And of course, yeah. well, before they, there's also the real estate industry of Australia. Yeah. Um, what what's there? I mean, a a you are, is, are all the states a sub-branch of those or are they just consulted together? How does that work? So the REIA, yeah. um, the president is Adrian Kelly at the moment. Yep. So again, you know, he clearly crossed way too many cats in his, <laughs> his last 12 months. Uh, so he's actually from Tasmania. And okay. uh, so he oversees the, at a federal level, yep. you know, whereas the REIs are all at the individual state levels and we push everything up. So if there's conversations like this had with regards to rental relief, you know, he will then push it up through the different ministers as well. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fantastic. So with what's happening in West Australia, do we think maybe we can have opens and auctions in mm. Melbourne soon? Do we know? Any tip? Any oh, late mail? Look, no, I don't have any tips. I, no. I, I can't see them opening the auction aspect. Yeah. I, I think agents, although it's been a different environment, I think agents have really taken really well to the to the online auction platform. Yep. Um, you know, there are some platforms that I think are better than others. Uh, I don't think we'll ever lose the street auction. It, it's, it's so Melbourne, isn't it? It's That's so right. Melbourne. Yeah, I mean, we're the so auction capital of the world, and absolutely. you travel around the world, and people are fascinated yeah, by it. That's right. But uh, it still works, which means you'll probably still have a job, Phil, yeah. and so will I. Well, well, I was I'm hoping to have the rest of the year off. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might still have that <laughs> yeah. too. You just have to see what happens because yeah. uh, we don't know what's going on. But no, no. Uh, it's a very interesting time, and and I think the world's never going to be the same and no. maybe real estate won't either. I mean, all the technology now, I know that we've jumped on a few different platforms and some new some new uh, ways of communicating and doing business through technology, which you've been driving me on for a while, Phil. So in Absolutely some ways, yeah. in some that ways... I gave you a few birthdays. Exactly right. I finally... <laughs> worked I just got it worked out and you wanted me to move on to a calculator already. You're very demanding. Uh, but for an older yeah. industry, for an industry that I'm sure you guys would agree that is often difficult to change yes. doesn't like change really quickly yep. the industry has been agile they've changed things in their businesses really quickly yep. they have been um, collective they've been amazing so yeah well that's, that's not great. that maybe that's a reflection of the president we have wow, we've got a, a new modern thinking <laughs> young president so uh, yeah, maybe that's helped us maybe. uh make those changes yeah. and move into the year 2020 yeah. a year of challenges 
and excitement. And look, no doubt I'll vote for you for next year. I think uh, should stay on because I think I think you need a year where you can just maybe not a have all of this. Rest. Exactly right, a year of rest. But uh, thank you for all that you've done and you do for the industry. Um, I've been you know very vocal in my support for you, and it's not you know it's not something that I chase around looking to do. But uh, it's just I think you've you've stood up for our industry so well. You've done such an amazing job in keeping all of the members advised and in, in representing us so well. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I think Philip is interested in the presidency maybe for 2021. Oh, so position going. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it a really red hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Can't, uh, can't get any more difficult. No. Now. Yeah, exactly right. So, and I think for the next year, for Phil's the president, he's going to say to you, what was all the fuss about? It was so easy. I can't understand why you were saying it was difficult, but uh, it's been an amazing yeah. year. So thanks again. Yeah. Thanks for being on GPTV. It's a pleasure to have you involved. And uh, we look forward to keeping in touch and having you continue to represent our industry so beautifully, you and Gil, the way that you do. And thanks for being on the show on GPTV. Thank you very much, Leah Kelly.